Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Easter and Passover nonsense. I don't know what I'll title this, probably that, I guess. First off, I don't know, I don't do many podcasts on this, although you might find some stuff scattered. And in my playlist, uh, who is Joseph F. Olsis. In general, I'm an atheist who one day, about the age of 20, 18, 19, was so amazed that people still believed in religion and this biblical God. Kept it to myself for most of my life until about five years ago or so, I had a Facebook war, I'm putting up the quote on quotes, and just had enough of the nonsense and had to, um, you know, voice my opinion. Uh, now that I'm at the age I am, it feels a little bit more of a burden to say, hey, look, this is all garbage and bullshit. Anyway, we'll get to the Easter Sunday type event because it's more what I'm associated with, but I do work for a kosher company and understand and for many years now have understood some of the culture and done my own research. I have just a lot of nonsense bullshit to, you know, talk about. And that'll be the crux of this podcast. I will put the link to the article I'm going to read. I might go, you know, more than one is it's a little bit uh, scattered, but the link will be in the description. If not, leave a comment and I'll put it in. I sometimes can make a mistake. And this was an article I chose. It's funny for me anyway, maybe not for everybody, but I'm looking at the, uh, you know, the results I got and the certain things I put for this podcast. You know, some of the markers and things and i figured i'd settle with this one if i feel like it's going too long i want to move on to something else we'll see there's a lot of links in here that are underlined by the way you can delve into that where it would question things historically like i said i'll read an article and i'll put the link in the description most of the time i read it word for word and i'll stop maybe inject a little bit of my own insights or my own nonsense because it's such what it all is, right? All right, so let's get going. This is, um, I don't know, no real website website, but the article is from or by Jason Sylvester. There's no real site except Diogenes of May, but I don't know. Don't know the website. Like I said, the link will be in there, but it's an article by Jason Sylvester. Easter nonsense. It's that time of year again when Christians celebrate God sacrificing himself to himself to save mankind from himself. Let's look at some of the insanity behind it all. The first one is a meme. It says you're saying it's a four-day weekend and I get chocolate. It is a little baby. The one I'm using for the uh, uh, thumbnail thing uh, for my site is my favorite. The story of Passover, the heartwarming story of when God needed to be reminded which babies he's supposed to kill. Right? I, uh, this is silly, but still, you look, the fucking people out there believe this nonsense. I'll continue. The timing of Easter tracks with, or used to at least, Passover, another celebration of the Abrahamic God's apparent bloodlust. The Exodus story which was tied to the Passover celebration, is a myth with no basis in historical reality. What's even more bizarre to any person with a conscience and an iota of critical thinking is the Jewish commemoration of an event in which a cruel and indiscriminate God murders innocent Egyptian children. Oh, let's not forget about that, right? By the way, it is a underlying link. No basis in historical reality. You can go and see the details if anybody wants to. And that'll be something that'll be going through the article I read. To compound all the nonsense, the Passover observation wasn't even original to the slavery myth, but was an ancient festival appropriated by Judite propagandists. 
This celebration is found only in the priestly source. Just as P grounded the Sabbath in the creation story, so it grounds the Passover in the story of the Exodus. The Passover was probably originally a rite of spring, and that's underlined also, practiced by shepherds. In early Israel, it was a family festival. The celebration was changed by the reform of King Josiah in 621 BCE into a pilgrimage festival to be celebrated at the, sen- the central sanctuary, Jerusalem, and was combined with the festival of unleavened bread. And that comes from uh, John J. Collins. There's another link to a uh, short introduction to Hebrew Bible. I'll continue. Easter then builds off the Passover feast, which, as some Christians overlook, was the Last Supper. John 13, however, puts the Last Supper a day earlier in order to cast Jesus in the starring role as a sacrificial lamb of Passover. Emperor Constantine, at the Council of Nicaea in 325, where the Trinity doctrine was proclaimed orthodox in addition to the other nonsense which follows, issued a letter with these extremely intolerant comments regarding the dating of Easter. So this is that letter. Okay, I'm not, these are my words. It was declared to be particularly unworthy for this, the holiest of all festivals, to follow the custom, the calculation of the Jews, who had soiled their hands with the most fearful of crimes and whose minds were blinded. In rejecting their custom, we may transmit to our descendants the legitimate made, the legitimate mode of celebrating Easter, which we have observed from the time of the Savior's Passion to the present day, according to the day of the week. We ought not, therefore, to have anything in common with the Jews. For the Savior has shown us another way. Our worship follows a more legitimate and more convenient course, the order of the days of the week. And consequently, in unanimously adopting this mode, we desire, dearest brethren, to separate ourselves from the detestable company of the Jews. <laughs> Oh, you Christians, Catholic, oh yeah. For it is truly shameful for us to hear them boast that without their direction we could not keep this feast. How can they be in the right day who, after the death of the Savior, have no longer been led by reason but by wild violence, as their delusion may urge them? They do not possess the truth in this Easter question. For, in their blindness and repugnance to all improvements, they frequently celebrate two Passovers in the same year. We could not imitate those who are openly in error. How, then, could we follow these Jews (laughs) who are most certainly blinded by error? For to celebrate the Passover twice in one year is totally inadmissible. But even if this were not, so... It would still be your duty not to tarnish your soul by communications with such wicked people. (laughs) Oh my god. Religion, yeah! Alright, I'm continuing. By the way, that was a fucking ding by somebody, you know, this was the Emperor Constantine bullshit, it wasn't me. Oh boy. This from the guy Christian propagandists claim made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire when he signed the Edict of Milan in 313. Ironically, an Edict of Religious Toleration, which put a stop to the Dioclectian, uh, what? Di- Dioclectian persecution of Christians. And so, Passover and Easter were forever decoupled, and human memory being short-term and highly selective, Many Christians fail to recognize the original connection. Moving on, the resurrection stories and the four Gospels don't even gel in their respective accounts. Go figure. The Bible is inconsistent. Who would have thought? The accounts differ in who went to the tomb, who they met, and what happened after. Mark originally ends at 16.8 with the women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, fleeing in terror. They saw a young man, dressed in white robes, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. 
But they, but he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There, there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, but terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. <laughs> One wonders if the women said nothing, how did the tale spread? Scholars believe the, reminder, the remainder of the verses in Mark 16 were added by a later editor to correct this blatant oversight. In Matthew, the women are Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. What the hell happened to Salome? And this time, it's an angel, not a young man, who greets them. The women go and tell the disciples, then Jesus appears. And they go back to Galilee, where Jesus appears again. In Luke, the women aren't even named. And it's not one man named me, it's two. The women go and tell the disciples, who don't believe the story. So Peter goes to the tomb to see for himself, but then just goes home and says nothing. In John, Mary Magdalene goes alone, sees the stone is moved, and runs to Peter and John, the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. They didn't understand what they saw, so they just went home. Then Mary Magdalene is greeted by two angels and Jesus. <sighs> to top off all the gospel inconsistencies is the sheer impossibility of resurrection, or as Celsus put it, in the second century is captured by Origen in the Aegis Celis against Celis. Oh boy, I'm at my top of my game murdering the English language. And I'll continue here is the uh, quote, I guess, or inconsistency. It begins, but the question is whether anyone who was really dead ever rose with a ver veritable body. Who beheld this? A half frantic woman, as you state, and some other one, perhaps, of those who were engaged in the same system of delusion, who had either dreamed so, owing to a peculiar state of mind, or under the influence of a wandering imagination, had formed to himself an appearance according to his own wishes, which has been the case with nu numerous individuals, or, which is most probable, one who desired to impress others with this portent, and by such a falsehood to furnish on occasion to impostors like himself. Celsus and Lucian lived at the same time and both expressed virtually identical sentiments. Jesus, the impaled philosopher. Oh, this is another art. I think this is from Lucian. Um, the poor wretches have convinced themselves, first and foremost, that they are going to be immortal and live for all time. Oh, boy. In consequence of which they despise death and even willingly give themselves into custody, most of them. Furthermore, the first lawgiver persuaded them that they are all brothers of one another after they have transgressed once. For all by denying the Greek gods and by worshipping that crucified sophist himself and living under his laws. Therefore, they despise all things indiscriminately, and consider them common property, receiving such doctrines traditionally without any definitive evidence. So if any charlatan and trickster able to profit by occasions comes among them, he quickly acquires sudden wealth by imposing upon simple folk. Ah, uh, Lucian of Samosata, the passing of Peregrinus. Uh, Anyway, I'll continue. Draw your own conclusions as to the magnitude of the last 2,000 years of Western history being shaped by the, quote, delusion of a half-frantic woman worshipping a crucified sophist. And then fast forward to today, chocolate bunnies and colored eggs. What the hell? Enjoy the long weekend. Well, again... If you go through this article, you'll see plenty of links, and it really is pointing out just a couple of inconsistencies, but just the sheer goal of some of these things to be ignored is just hilarious. 
you watch it even this day i have a friend i don't know if he's a friend anymore but he does these facebook things and he's a rabbi and just the nonsense you hear them speak and the double talk and the 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 manipulation they have to do to keep this thing going there's also um isn't there a a way this goes with the muslim uh holiday There's a question here. Why is Christians celebrating Passover? Uh, which Cre- Jesus Christ saw as a Pascha lamb, but why would Jesus Christ be celebrated? As a- if we look into the Gospels, and then the Jews led Jesus to the place of the Roman governor, Pilate, to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness. The Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover, Pilate, eat the Passover. Pilate said to Jewish leaders, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? John 18, 28, 39, 40, I guess these are various things. This all happened on Passover day. In fact, the well-known Last Supper of Jesus was his cedar meal celebrated with his disciples. Also, on Passover, since Passover began at sundown on Thursday evening, with Jesus' last cedar, arrest, trial, and execution all occurring on Passover, there is a direct historical link between Jesus and Passover. Moses, Passover, and Jesus. When one looks back to the accounts of the first Passover in the Torah, when Moses led the Hebrews out of Egypt, then this link takes on special meaning. The complete Torah account uh, is here, there's a link, uh, but when G. But when God blessed be, he explained to Moses how Passover, Peshach, would unfold its states. For that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals, and I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. The blood will serve you as a sign, marking the houses where you are, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Then I strike the land of Egypt. The death blow will not strike you. <laughs> Yay, God! This is fucking this is so such bullshit. I, you know, I, I, I wonder to myself sometimes as I, you know, look back on my life, and you know, like I said, I was so surprised that um, at an as adults believed in religion is. God nonsense. And you look at this, you know, indoctrination as the generations go on and we're still here, although it's fading out, right? That's just unavoidable in my opinion. They'll still keep fighting tooth and nail. But people are shields for these decrepit, disgusting people. And I don't mean people who are just religious, obviously. It's the ones who are using it to do their nefarious bullshit. Is it enough that one child was raped or harmed or molested? Is one not enough? How about thousands? And how about playing fucking, you know, shuffleboard and moving the priests around and criminally, you know, harming the police investigations? And this is not just Christians, and I'm sure it's everywhere. But if it was anything else other than religion, it would be immediately squashed. Uh, Any boarding home, company, franchise, McDonald's, you name it, had the same setup, the same problems. There'd be an investigation. Or at the very least, let's just change everything and make a law that says all religions would have to be run by women and you change, like, something, right? But no, nothing happens. So I won't be a shield, you know, wearing a cross and saying things about certain religions on certain holidays is not really a problem for me. There are people who I know are friends with that believe in their own whatever versions of God. It's the people who, I guess, you know, fanatics and the literalists and, you know, who want to quote Bible stuff that are the real danger. But even the people who don't, you're a shield. So it would be a better preference, I guess, to 
you know, believe in what you believe in, but you don't support these churches. And this whole religious fucking nonsense has been going on for so long that it's just part of human nature now, and I get it. And maybe at one time in our evolution we needed religion, and it was helpful, sure, but I'm not going to sit here and bullshit people because, you know, a Christian organization has seven homeless shelter places that they help people. Yeah, you know, they make billions and millions, ungodly amounts of money in their fucking gold-plated bullshit houses. And they get to rape children and fuck the laws over everywhere they go and get special treatment. It's fucking nonsense. And this whole thing, just from beginning to end, is this bullshit. And I think the whole religion thing will die down and people are always going to be looking for answers if it's not on fucking spirituality shit. You know, it'll be crystals and fucking, you know, meditation things and looking at certain angles on how to find the truth in things and it's just what we do as humans when we want the answers we want a reason to be i'm fine with all that i'm sure there are plenty of people who know me i've never mentioned religion or my atheism ever in our whole life because it was not something that who cares it was nothing to bring up and like i said it, it was only something that really got to my um attention when i was on facebook and coming out of a weird time and i started analyzing things and you notice that the same religious people who post shit from you know the same religions that want their gay you know sons daughters nephews sisters killed and stoned to death you know or the same people who are upset about a black football player kneeling during the anthem just bullshit be introspective look find the truth until it hurts within you yeah most people are going to be somewhat racist, bigoted, whatever. We can overcome these things. We don't need fucking a nonsense religion. There's nothing religion has ever that Donald can do that you can't do without it. And it's not just a uh, all one way or another skepticism type thing. We, we as people, keep forgetting the the signs we see that we just ignore. It's to say. How come an ambulance hasn't pulled up to somebody and they get out and go, this person needs a priest? It's never going to happen. How come in hospitals there aren't little sections for where priests heal minor cuts and wounds and cure the common colds? Because it doesn't work. Prayer is bullshit. A fact that it doesn't work. But this delusion is everywhere and it would be somewhat harmless in the long run. But you have people benefiting off this, just like they do in politics and in every way of life. We have not evolved or ascended to this fucking type of person where you can be safe in that religions are uh, more of a good outweighs the bad, right? But when you get down to it and you think critically, like this article said, like this is nonsense. This is a god killing innocent Egyptian children. And people are fucking celebrating and clapping. And for the people who keep saying things like the New Testament, whatever, no. You can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament. And Jesus was a fucking knucklehead. Because you don't examine it. Most people take more skepticism and do more due diligence when they go to buy a fucking car. Or a house. Or get their will in order. Right? When they go to the doctor, they do more research and more due diligence with minor things like going to the store to buy the latest TV or the best computer and what RAM it has. You do more. But the biggest question, the most important thing God, this being in the sky. Bullshit. It doesn't matter. So it's that balance of sitting around. You know, in my normal everyday life, it doesn't matter to me. I don't bring it up. I don't have preaching sessions and, you know, I don't rail against the religious shit. But when I see it, I I shoot it down. I laugh. It's just fucking stupid. And I don't believe in this respect and bullshit of my beliefs. You know, fuck you. You crazy? Yeah, I believe 
gay people should be stoned, <laughs> respect my belief, or, you know what, go fuck yourself, I don't care. You want to believe in children's shit as an adult? I don't care. Just stop the fucking doctrine, the fanatical bullshit, the literal bullshit nonsense. Just say it was a fucking books were made by normal fucking people at the time of fucking illiteracy and dark age nonsense. Trying to give a compass to life. People's direction. Fine. But there's no basis in historical reality for most of this nonsense. It's like, you can't grab a Spider-Man comic book 5,000 years after a cataclysm and the end of your whatever and go, oh look, Spider-Man was real, there's the Empire State Building. Right? You can't just say, oh, one thing from any historical thing and then pinpoint it because, you know what, most people don't have critical thinking skills and don't apply it to the most important thing in the world, which it should be, right? But it's bullshit. The fucking image I have for this thing is just so perfect. The heartwarming story of when God needed to, reminded, to be reminded which babies he's supposed to kill. I think Satan kills two people, maybe, debatable in the Bible, or fucking whatever. Let's not get into the bullshit with the Tanakh and whatever Jewish nonsense, or well, I don't know, what is it, Muslim and the, whatever the fuck. It's going away too slow in my opinion. I thought, like I said, when I got up, one day, 18 to 20, although there was some tragedy in my life, which will open your eyes to the nonsense, you go, how do fucking people still believe this shit? Well, it's mostly from the fathers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers who have just bled it into society and just taught their children everything, right? You get that thing about the data, you know, what people believe and where they're from. It all lines up, right? Ooh, how is that? And there's other things about, you know, the God in your head always agrees with you, right? Because, you know, you made it up. It's the God in your head. How many conversations, once you drill deep, it's like, oh, no, I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about, you know, what? The God that you made up in your head, right? Oh, you know, the, the, the humans, they misinterpreted his language and his words. It's all this apologetics nonsense. I hope people wake up one day. And as this will be out Easter or Passover, it's fucking hilarious. This is somewhat insanity. This is delusional nonsense that is perpetrated every day. Organizations that are breaking in billions of dollars, raping the children, hiding the priest, you know, and just go even deeper. Do we have to talk about the cutting off kids' feet and putting them in their freezer? Like, you have maniacs out there, and they're protected by a fucking outfit dress of some fucking religion. Whether you're going to wear a fucking skirt with shawl things and gaudy shit on you, or you're wrapping to fill in and big hats and curls. Like, I don't give a fuck. Because the gods that you worship don't protect nobody. And it's done in their house of worship. There should be a fucking laws now about this. Shut these fucking places down. Start new religions. How about that? Just like the secular nation and whatever uh, societies dragged all these religions out of the dark age. That's why religion is somewhat tolerated. You can't have what was going on back in the day. Because back in the day, Christianity was just the new Muslim. Like what we think is just a baby um religion because muslim the teachings whatever oh and they're savage and all the teachings and they're, well that's how it was there for the back in the day go look through history so happy easter bless passover bless whatever the fuck you're doing fine just know that you're probably a shield that manipulative evil fucking people are abusing because that's the human nature and it's so many people in this world, there's so much of a percentage of this or this way or that way, it's really not going to matter in the end. Because the numbers show, you know, more people are just becoming non-believers, they don't have to become atheists. They just don't care. All the churches, the, the pews don't fill up. But you got some great guy on Saturday with his big fucking shiny teeth worth fucking $17 billion, whatever the fuck it is. 
can't help people when the flood comes, right? He tells you God wants you to send him money. This is so fucking stupid. It's so ridiculous. I understand keeping the tribe, keeping the culture things that make you unique or are special to you. But don't you think it's time that this is bullshit is just left behind, right? I mean, look at Christmas now. It's just a celebrating giving gifts. It has nothing to fucking do with religion anymore in America. So go fuck yourself there. And it's all pagan ripped off. You all ripped off pagan stuff anyway. So this is all bullshit from beginning to end. Go look, do fucking some research. Find out who wrote the Bible, when it was written, who did the New Testament, the Tanakh, and all that garbage nonsense. And like I said, maybe at one time it was meant to lift us up and carry us through some dark fucking times. Grant it. You got it. Fine. Give them a little leeway as it is explored and exposed and abused by people. Fine. You know, the good outweighs the bad. Whatever. But it's done with now. Stop the bullshit. This is nonsense ridiculousness. Well, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. I think I'll end this here. Like I said, I'll put the link in the description. And it's just pointing out a couple of inconsistencies and in some of the things. But you'll see the underlying um, links here that will bring you to the Council of Nicaea and Constantine. Now, this is just fascinating. You'll definitely get more looking at these links with my ramblings. We'll see where this goes in the future. I don't know if I'll do every holiday, but I just found this to be so ridiculous, such nonsense, you know. <laughs> Still boggles my mind sometimes. You wake up and fucking populations of this world are believing in imaginary guys sitting in the sky and thrones and yeah maybe it would be nice if you think things would happen and there's people are rising from the dead and there's a the past of afterlife you know what it's all bullshit sorry anyway happy holidays my best to you and yours i'll talk to you all next time take care